This is the fourth section of chapter two on quadratics and this section is about quadratic graphs. So this section is all about sketching quadratic graphs and whenever we sketch a quadratic there are some important points we need to show on our quadratic graph. So first of all quadratics um, are going to be in this form ax squared plus bx plus c. If the number in front of a squared or if there's no front number in front of a squared if that's positive you're going to have a u-shaped quadratic go down and then it'll come back up again if the number in front of x squared is negative even if it just says negative x squared it will be like an n-shaped quadratic it will go up and then come back down first of all for a u-shaped quadratic and i want to work out the roots of that quadratic and this is the same for an n-shaped quadratic the roots of um, a quadratic or any equation are the points where the graph crosses the x-axis so we would set the function f of x equal to zero and solve for x that will give us the x coordinates same with an n-shaped quadratic set f of x equal to zero and solve for x that will give you the x coordinates of the roots where the graph intercepts or crosses the x-axis we also need to know the minimum point of a u-shaped quadratic and the coordinates we need to know the maximum point of an n-shaped quadratic now we can work this out once we've written it in the completed the square form now we've done an example like that previously once we've got it in the completed the square form it's quite straightforward to work out the coordinate of the minimum point or the maximum point and then lastly, the y-intercept. So this is where a quadratic crosses the y-axis for a u-shaped or n-shaped quadratic graph. And what we do is for the function, we replace x with zero. So we find f of zero in both cases. So if we replace x with zero, that will give us a y-value and that will tell us the y-coordinate where the graph crosses the y-axis so we need to work out all of these different points on a quadratic make sure we get the right shape and the right way up and we write down the coordinates of the roots the coordinates of the minimum point or maximum point and the coordinate where the uh, quadratic crosses or intersects the y-axis all of those will be needed for a full sketch of a quadratic what we wouldn't do is do a table of values and draw the graph okay that's actually plotting a graph so we're not plotting a graph we're getting a sketch and the sketches are always going to be getting the correct shape and the coordinates of any important points on that graph example 11 sketch the graph of y equals x squared minus 5x plus 4 and find the coordinates of its turning point. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is just sketch out a coordinate grid, an x and y axis, and then think about the different things that I need for this sketch. Now, I, I can see that this is a positive x squared, so I know it's going to be u shaped, so I'll just put that there, little u to remind me to do it that way up. Let's start by working out the roots of this quadratic so I've got lots of different methods I can use uh, factorize complete the square quadratic equation let's start by seeing if I can uh, factorize it because that's always going to be the easier option so two numbers that multiply to give me four and give me five add to give me five so that's going to be four and one because that multiplies to give me four I can combine those to make five now I want plus 4 and minus 5, so it's going to be minus 4 and minus 1. So I will have x minus 4 and then x minus 1. When I factorise it, x minus 1, and that will equal to 0. So that means that x is equal to 4 x is equal to 1 so I can mark down on my grid and as I said don't need to be to scale but I'm just going to use one box here for each number 1 
and four here right so now i can draw my quadratic through those because i know it's u-shaped and i just go through the crosses like this next thing that i need to know is where the graph crosses the y-axis so that's going to be this point here so i need to work out the y-intercept now to work out the y-intercept remember i said that we set uh, x as zero so here i've got y equals this function rather than f of x so f of zero is the same as saying that i make x equal to zero to find that y-intercept so then I will have y is equal to 0 squared minus 5 times 0 plus 4. So if I work that out, that gives me a value of 4. That means that the graph crosses the y-axis at 4. So that's the other important point. There's one other thing that I need to work out, and that's going to be, in this case, the minimum point of this. So minimum. If it was n-shaped it will be working out a maximum so to work out the minimum this is where i'd complete the square on my function so i start with x squared minus 5x plus 4 and what i'll do from here is i'll have x minus uh, half of 5 over uh, 5 which is 502 i'm going to leave that as a fraction and then I'd need to work out, right, what would I get if I expanded these brackets? What do I need to subtract that I don't want? Now, because I've done it as a fraction, um, I know that I'm going to get this number squared. So I'll get 5 over 2 all squared, which I don't want. So I'll write that as 5 over 2 all squared. So I don't want that. So I'll take that off. But I do want the number 4. So I'll do plus 4. So from there... I can write x minus 5 over 2 all squared. Then I'm going to work out 5 over 2 all squared and add 4. So that's the same as negative 25 over 4 plus 4, which gives me negative 9 over 4. Right, so from this, I can work out the coordinates of the minimum point. So first of all, what's the smallest that this can be? And it's always just this number here, which is negative 9 over 4. So this whole expression, which is equal to y, the smallest that y can be is negative 9 over 4. And what value of x is going to make that happen? Well, it's the value of x that's going to make this bracket equal to 0. And the value of x that's going to make this bracket equal to 0 is going to be 5 over 2. So we now have our coordinate of our minimum point, And I'll mark it on like this. A y value of negative 9 over 4. And an x value of 5 over 2. Now whenever we do this, I'll write it as a coordinate down here. 5 over 2, negative 9 over 4. Whenever you put your coordinates on, make sure that the coordinates are consistent with your diagram. So I, I'm expecting y to be negative because it's down here. I'm expecting x to be positive because it's across here. If your coordinates are not consistent with your diagram, either check your diagram or check your working. So if the signs are not correct for the coordinates, go back and check your working or your diagram. Example 2. Sketch the graph of y equals 4x minus 2x squared minus 3. Find the coordinates of its turning point and write down the equation of the line of symmetry. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to swap these terms around. So it's just in the way I expect to see it. So minus 2x cubed, negative 2x cubed, sorry, squared, plus 4x minus 3. And I'll draw a coordinate axis here, which I'm going to be using to put my sketch of my graph on. Now, because um, there is a negative number in front of x, 
um, it means that this is going to be an N-shaped quadratic. So I'll just put a little thing like that to remind me, which means I'm going to be finding the, the uh, coordinates of the turning point. It's going to be a maximum in this case. So the first thing I'm going to do is to find the roots. Now, I could find the roots by completing the square or factorising, but it could be that this is a quadratic that doesn't cross the axis. And I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to find roots by completing the square or um, trying to factorise when actually there may not be any roots. So if you don't spot it factorises quickly and easily, especially as I've got a negative 2 there and I'm going to have to multiply numbers together and things like that, use a quadratic equation. It's probably going to be the, the most efficient uh, way in this case. So I would have A is equal to negative 2, B is equal to 4, and C equal to negative 3 in my quadratic equation. So that's going to be um, minus B, so minus 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 4 squared, minus 4 times by a, which is negative 2, times by c, which is negative 3. And that's all going to be divided by 2a. So that's going to be 2 times by negative 2. So let's simplify that all and see what we get. So you've got negative 4 plus or minus. Now we'll work out... 4 squared minus um, 24, I think, when we multiply that all together. And we get a value of negative 8. Now, what's going to happen here, this is going to cause a problem. In normal maths, we don't know how to find the square root of a negative number. It's going to come up error, which means that there are no roots no roots because of that negative 8 and actually what we say is there are no real roots if you do further maths you'll see that there are roots but they're not real roots it's not a real number it's not going to be a fraction third decimal integer it's not going to be any one of those types of numbers so there are no real roots which means that this quadratic does not cross the axis so it doesn't go up and cross the axis so it could be that it's down here somewhere but it's not actually reaching the, uh, the axis so there are no roots we'll now move on to looking at where it crosses the y inter axis the y intercept now every quadratic will have a y intercept at some point it will cross the y axis even if it doesn't cross the x axis so this is where we set x equal to 0 and work out what the y coordinate is. So that would be negative 2 times by 0 squared plus 4 times 0 minus 3. And that gives us minus 3, negative 3. So this graph crosses the x-axis here, y-axis, sorry, at negative 3. I can now draw what my quadratic is going to look like. It's going to look like something like this, but not touching the axis. And then the last thing I need to do is to work out what's the coordinate of this maximum point. What are these two coordinates here, or this set of coordinates here? So we're going to work out the maximum point rather than a minimum. So this is where we're going to complete the square to do this. So taking our quadratic which is y equal to negative 2 x squared plus 4 x minus 3 we want that number in front of x the coefficient of x to be 1 so we'll take negative 2 out and then in brackets we'll have x squared minus 2 x so you need to be careful that needs to multiply to give you plus 4 x and then plus 3 over 2 because that needs to multiply out to give you negative 3 so be careful with your signs now we complete the square with what we have in the brackets so x 
minus half of negative 2, which is negative 1. When I expand this bracket here, that's going to give me a po positive 1, which I don't want. So we'll take that off. But I do want 3 over 2, so we'll put plus 3 over 2. Like that. And that, this is what y is equal to still. So I should put really y is equal to that. So from there, y is going to be equal to x or negative 2. Let's put that in negative 2 times by x minus 1 all squared and then negative a half sorry negative 1 plus 3 over 2 is going to be plus a half now because we have the negative 2 outside the bracket this whole thing is going to become a maximum when this thing inside the bracket is the most negative it can be the most negative so or the the lowest it can be because when we multiply that by the negative 2 a negative times a negative is going to give us a positive now i can see here that this is never going to be negative but i do want this to be as small as possible so I'll just put down here maximum of y the whole thing is when this part the part that I've just highlighted is at its smallest or lowest because the bigger you make this the bigger the number you're going to times by negative 2, the lower it's going to go down. So you want this to be as low as possible. And the lowest all of this section is going to be here is going to be a half. So y will be negative 2 times by a half. That's the lowest you can make this bracket here. In other words, the lowest y value you're going to get, or sorry, the largest y value you're going to get is going to be negative 1. And what x value is going to make this as low as possible, just a half, is going to be when x is 1, when this bit becomes 0. So that will happen. x will be negative, sorry, y will be negative 1 when x is equal to 1. So we now have our coordinate of our minimum point. So when x is 1, so this is 1 here, and when y is negative 1. Now I'll write that coordinate down here, so that's 1, negative 1. And always check, is that coordinate consistent with our diagram? Well, x is positive, yes, y is negative. So it's consistent with the diagram that we've drawn. So you should now be able to do exercise 2F on page 30 of the textbook.